Hello and welcome back everyone. So this is the part 2 of our video which was previously started that is concomitant exotropia. So in this video we are going to talk about the two more types of concomitant exotropia which were left. So this time we are going to talk about what is a primary constant exotropia. So previously we were done with something called as intermittent and rather what we see here exotropia. So what is this primary constant exotropia? Let's start with it. So in this uh, we'll start directly with what is your clinical features because primary constant exotropia is not as frequent as intermittent because we all know that good amount of fusional just keeps it into that intermittent phase but the moment it is deteriorated further it will go into a stage of constant squint. So it is the preceding stage after your uh, intermittent exotropia so it will be same as your uh, the same uh, so let's start with what are the clinical features so first of all we'll see what are the time of onset so generally this constant exotropia starts uh, in two phases there is one which is can be your early childhood phase or the second one which is the more of the adult phase so first of all if you see there is either a infantile phase in which is extremely rare as i earlier said in the part one that uh, generally we see more of esotropia compared to the exotropia because of the role of accommodation, convergence and the uh, muscles which are present and the tonic uh, uh, muscle power. So here it is a very rare condition which is generally seen shortly after the birth. It is reported that this form of exotropia is very common in the African than in the white race. So this was something which was done in a study and they found out that it is more common into the Africans uh, rather the uh, Caucasians okay so white were uh, not having such kind of thing uh, the next thing is your uh, primary constant exotropia due to decompensated uh, intermittent exo so basically a foria which was decompensated into a tropia so initially that patient started with probably your uh, exophoria and which led to intermittent uh, exotropia but which was not uh, properly treated or not given a proper uh, attention it got decompensated and went into the form of constant exotropia so these are the two time of onset which we generally see so the fixation pattern coming on to the clinical feature of fixation pattern a fixation pattern means basically it can be unilateral or alternating and when these two happens let's go on to it so first of all we see something called as an uh, alternating uh, exotropia now alternating means that either of the eye can take fixation it is not that only one eye will be into squint continuous either of the eye takes a uh, fixation generally these kind of patient have a very mm, similar amount of visual equity in both the eye or a very little difference because of that either of the eye can be preferred for a vision uh, the angle of de deviation is usually very large and tend to be equal in for distance as well as near so the near de de deviation is determined by the effect of proximal and accommodative convergence. So whenever you see such patient you will find out that the amount of deviation remains almost constant for distance and near because either of the eye is being used at a time for a particular fixation. So there is no change into your deviation. Uh, sensory adaptation what they find is that uh, they have an alternate suppression which can be done quite easily. This patient have a normal retinal correspondence um, and uh, so what happens that the patient is suppressing if for example the right eye is fixating now the left eye is automatically going into a suppression and vice versa when doing the other way around so it is very uh, less that we see such patient developing ARC because they develop that alternate suppression ARC will only be seen if the patient is uh, having uh, uh, this kind of tropia in the early ages because that time the neuroplasticity is quite good and the patient generally develops an ARC in that stage only. Second thing is your uh, unilateral deviation or unilateral exotropia. So here there is a constant unilateral exotropia and the same eye is used for fixation. So let it be right gaze or left gaze, any gaze. Uh, patient will use only the good eye for fixation. Here most of the time what we see there is a difference of the vision in the eyes generally and there is amblyopia into the eye which is continuously in state of deviation. So these are the two t clinical features which we generally see. So coming on to the next thing which is association. So association generally they have associations of AV pattern, 
dissociated vertical deviation and concomitant vertical deviation these are quite commonly associated with them so this is a uh, V exotropia which we see so V exotropia is commonly seen so V exotropia basically has a different angle of deviation whenever the patient is looking in up gaze or down gaze so if you see in this diagram it is quite uh, simply said that the patient is looking in down gaze so it is less as he goes into the up gaze the increase in deviation and DVD that is the dissociated vertical deviation that the either of I can go up and extorted so this will go into in some other presentation in detail about the DVD so concomitant vertical deviation are also very common with such kind of cases so let's go to clinical evaluation it is simple in such cases we'll go for the uh, evaluation of the amount of deviation that how much amount of deviation it is also we need to find out that if uh, there is some vertical deviation present or not so that can be done with the help of other tests as well and we generally prefer PBCT that is uh, prism bar cover test to identify the amount of your deviation or rather the angle of deviation how much is it so let's go to treatment simple the treatment is most of the time we see that the patient prefer for surgery uh, because uh, almost uh, your orthoptic treatment can give can be given pre-op or post-op but if the patient is only willing for a cosmetic uh, appearance so it is better to go for surgery but it is better to first try and give orthoptic exercises if the patient can reduce the amount of squint by that it is well and good because not only cosmesis but your stereopsis and fusions are also important for uh, your normal life to go on but if the patient has only a requirement of cosmesis then it is quite normal that we can go for so we can we can also go for your uh, orthoptic exercises that is basically your anti-suppression and all which can be given in some of the patients so if they are having a symptom so generally the patient have a need for cosmesis so most of the time it is surgery is the preferred treatment which is given now coming on to something called as sensory exotropia now sensory exotropia the term itself means there is something which is obstructing the sense of light so there is it is commonly a unilateral exotropia that develops because of a result of poor visual function in one eye so what is happening that one eye is having a poor visual function that could be because of anything because of cataract because of retinal abnormality because of a corneal opacity or something else and that is not leading the light to be f processed to the brain so one eye is having a poor visual function and because of that the eye is unable to fixate at a particular point or the eye cannot coordinate properly and so the eye goes into a state of uh, lateral deviation that is outward and that is what is your sensory exotropia so what is the etiopathogenesis um, it is a secondary or uh, uh, result was secondary to some sensory deficits such as anisometropia or other unilateral cataract, unilateral aphakia, corneal opacity, optic atrophy, macular lesion or any other organic causes which can uh, lead to a loss of vision in one eye. So it is reported that both in infant and young with poor vision one eye will develop a sensory exotropia older children tend to develop an esotropia. Now it is because maybe your convergence and accommodation into it the mechanism of this uh, can be explained later into a uh, different where we talk more more about the mechanism or the working of your convergence accommodation and other thing so here what we see generally is the younger children they develop an exotropia sensory exotropia uh, whereas your uh, when we say the older children they develop an exotropia so these are all the causes which we generally see so what are the clinical features there is a monocular visual loss generally this patient will come up with uh, to you with a history of a cataract or probably something which was diagnosed which led to a deprived visual function in one eye which caused actually the exotropia so many patients also complained that initially it was not there and once this problem arised as it passed on the patient went to a state of exotropia 
and deviation is almost unilateral and constant and involves the eye with the poor vision so you'll always find out that the eye which is deviated has a lesser amount of vision and also the abnormality and it is constantly into that state of uh, exo deviation and it is a constant it is a concomitant squint so the eye just follows the other eye as the movement so you will not find any restriction of movement in any of the gazes so here treatment when we say you know the treatment is actually different what some textbooks say uh, if it is a young child in which we can do a surgery to treat the base cause and that could improve the visual equity so improving that visual equity can also improve the status of the uh, eye basically in terms of ortho position so let's say the patient had a cataract so as early as possible the cataract is removed and the patient is given the full correction and given some therapy so that can actually lead to a better uh, prognosis so it is not uh, necessary that the patient needs to go for a uh, what we say your um, refractive sur your surgical treatment so if the base cause can be treated and the vision can be made better by the help of glasses or something or at least with the help of uh, vision therapy we can do something so in such scenario the surgery should be a bit delayed and first all those approaches can be done and once they are not giving a better very better result or they are gone to the maximum limit then we can think about the cosmetic appearance and go for the surgery so the treatment can go for cosmetic surgery and the choice of surgery could be a uh, recess or resect so recess resect means for example if the deviation is quite large you cannot just do a surgery on one particular muscle you need to tighten one and the other uh, loosen the other one for example it is exotropia the medial rectus has to be tightened and the lateral rectus has to be loosened there is also one more surgery which is called as your adjustable suture surgery now this is preferred for patient about 10 to 11 years of age with sensory exotropia because many times what happens in sensory exotropia even after correcting the patient the patient can still go into that state again where the uh, exotropia can relapse so this adjustable suture what they do is they can be readjusted in future so as to again recover that amount of squint which is happening so these are some of the treatment which can be done coming on to the last uh, topic of exotropia that is consecutive exotropia one of the simplest thing to understand consecutive the term consecutive means that due to uh, resulting because of some other procedure previously it was something else but uh, it actually developed into an exotropia so clinical types are two the first is surgical overcorrection of exotropia many times what happens that a patient actually came up with uh, uh, Esotropia and had to undergo a surgery to correct it, but uh, due to the overaction of muscles or due to the over calibration of the muscle or rather the excessive cutting or excessive loosening of the muscle what happens that esotropia actually lands up with an exotropia which can be very small or could be slightly more and the second thing is your spontaneous consecutive exotropia now what is spontaneous consecutive exotropia uh, it is the change of your esotropia into an exotropia without exogenous mechanical factor that it is basically not uh, because of any other mechanical factor it could be because an acquired paralysis of the medial rectus that initially that the patient had um, what we say esotropia but as later on it progressed what happened that there was some paralysis or something into the medial rectus and this spontaneously went on to become an exotropia so esotropia with a poor vision in deviating eye that can actually lead to something which we called as your uh, spontaneous consecutive exotropia or an infantile esotropia with uh, a high hypermetropia what happens with a very high hypermetropia that for a particular time the patient was accommodating when he was very young the muscles were quite strong but as the age increases that amount of accommodation is no more feasible for the patient to do because we all know the amount of accommodation changes as the age grows so after a particular time the brain find out that i cannot cover up so much of a particular accommodation and it relaxes the complete as we know the higher the uh, refractive state uh, so there will be no accommodation for such patient and the moment there is no accommodation at all what will happen the eye will go into a divergent state so these are the two types which we commonly see coming on to the treatment part so treatment we have refractive cor uh, correction if any should be done and next is your overcome the suppression let's say the patient had uh, 
a normal retinal correspondence and your bifovial fusion can be demonstrated in this patient so what we try to do is we try to overcome the suppression with the help of your uh, uh, MFBF that is monocular fixation in a binocular field so we do this exercises so as to break the suppression and again establish a uh, working between your both the eyes so that is a very a uh, simplest way to again establish a fusion between both the eyes which can lead to a fusional convergence and bring back the eye into an ortho position and improve the fusional vergence with the help of exercises like vectogram tranaglyph or anaglyph and with the help of prism so these are the things which we can do and if this all are not working then the final thing is which we can do is surgery so what happens in this surgery we do a uh, tightening of your medial rectus or either loosening of your lateral rectus or both of them together depending on the amount of deviation which is present so these are the treatment which are possible with the patient of a consecutive exotropia so thank you very much for your kind listening and your attention so for any queries or any doubt you can just put it into your comment i'll be giving your answer into it and we'll be shortly back with more videos on binocular vision uh, keep following us and thank you again goodbye